Hi everyone, it's me again, yay! Um, today I am doing the 13 question tag. Woohoo! Um, I saw Configure 1973 and um, Under the Lily Shadow, Nikki and Cindy do it and I thought it was really cool and awesome so I thought I'd join in with you guys. Hi, how's it going? Oh yeah, cool. Okay, so um, yeah, let's go. Question one. What do you order at Starbucks? Um, nothing, because I've never been to Starbucks in my entire life. But, when I go to coffee shops and similar sort of places, what I order is a cup of tea, normal, traditional English cup of tea, you know, this frothy stuff or whatever, and a packet of Maltesers. And what you do is you put the Maltesers in the tea while it's still hot, and leave them in there for a few seconds, and then eat them with a spoon. And it's really nice, like they melt on the outside and sometimes people in the restaurant look at you like you're a bit weird but if you just offer them a Malteser on your spoon then they stop looking at you after that so yeah, I strongly recommend you guys try it because it's really nice, it works with any hot drink that's what I order at Starbucks um, except I don't go there Question 2 What's one thing in your closet that you can't live without? <laughs> ears I couldn't live without ears I know they're not usually considered an essential fashion item or practical or anything like that, but yeah, ears are cool for all occasions, mainly cat ears, but yeah, lots of ears. I'll show you all my ears, right? Ears, 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 oh, ears. I'm a six foot elf. And yeah, those are all my ears. Um, I've got some neon pink cat ears as well, but they're in my car and I really can't be bothered to go and get them. But I'll show you a picture. Yeah, they're well cool, aren't they? I made them myself. It took ages and ages. I think I'll just buy them next time. Anyway, so ears. Um, question three. What's one thing that most people don't know about you? Okay, this is going to sound maybe even more weird than the last question and it might sound a little bit creepy but it's not, I promise right, um, I've got a thing about number plates um, like the registration on your car like, I'm a bit, I'm not like a train spotter, I don't write them down or anything like that but if I met you and I saw your car I'd remember your number plate for the rest of my life and then if you got another car then I'd remember that one as well because number plates, they, um, they kind of give a car its personality sort of thing like my car is smiling but like, you know like text faces yeah my car's really really happy it's quite handy actually because it's really surprising the amount of people you see and you don't know like every single journey I'll see somebody that I'm familiar with because I recognize the number plate so I'll honk and go hi and they're like oh how else did you see me it was dark I'm like, can I sleep with another Not in a creepy way though, I don't stalk people or anything like that, but I'd be a really good police camera. Four, name one thing you want to do before you die. Grow old? Disgracefully? No, I really want to get an HGV license. Um, it's something that I've always wanted to do. My dad was a lorry driver for a really long time. When I was little, I used to go out in his lorry with him. And lorries are just really cool. Um, when I'm in traffic and there's one next to me, I'll open the window so that I can listen to the engine. They're just brilliant. I was seven once and I sat on his lap and steered the steering wheel for a bit and oh, it was just the most amazing thing ever. But while I'm doing nails, I won't really think about it too much. But it is something that I'd like to do one day. Drive a massive lorry, or if not a lorry, then an equally large, huge vehicle that's really manly and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, five. What's one food that you can't live without? Sausages. I can't live without sausages. I'd have sausages for the rest of my life. If that was the only food that was in the world, I'd just eat sausages. Whenever someone asks me what I want for tea, I go, sausages. I don't know why they didn't just say, hey Beth, do you want sausages for tea tonight? And I'll be like, oh yeah, actually, I, I wouldn't mind, thanks. Um, how did you know? Um, yeah, so I like sausages. Um, question six. What quote or phrase do you live your life by? It's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. Seriously, if you think about it, you know you get the, all these important people and they're really horrible and then they end up being all like bankrupt with no friends and nobody wants to help them. And then you have nice people that may not have everything in the world, but they make an effort to be nice to everyone that they meet. 
because you know why not it's not difficult and then if they ever do get in any trouble or anything bad happens to them they'll have lots of people to help them out in their in their hour of need because that's what happens to nice people usually sometimes things are unfair but it's important to be nice more important to be nice than to be important seven is that yeah what do you like and dislike about the youtube community um i like i really like um the fact that i i came to youtube not with like ambitions to be all like famous or anything like that I just wanted to share my nails, you know, just post them online and if people liked them then they'd say, cool nails, and I'll be like, thanks, you know, because it's nice to share nails. Um, but I've met so many amazing people and it's just such a shame that you guys all live in completely different countries because I just, oh, I just love to hang out with all you guys and have a massive nail painting sesh, that would be amazing because I just it's the best thing ever. I joined YouTube and I've just made these mental friends and some of them are just full of epic win and I could just marry you all. Not all of you, um, but you know, a few. Um, you know who you are. Um, yeah, I dislike all the spam, the, the shameless spam. When, um, when you post a video and then you get a new comment you go to see, you know, you go, oh, I wonder who's commented on my video, let's have a read. And they've just written, hey everyone, check out my channel and subscribe. And I just think that that's really rude. And they just, all the people who just write absolutely everywhere, or post their videos absolutely everywhere, to, you know, people who don't even, people post videos to me that are about fishing and stuff like that. I just think, like, do I look like I'm really into that kind of thing? I mean, thanks for the video and stuff, but you know, find somebody who's in, who you think will be interested and say, hello, how's it going? Would you like to come and see my channel? Don't just spam all over my videos. That's what I dislike. Oh, I dislike that so much. But yeah, anyway. Um, number eight. What's your number one most listened to song on iTunes? <laughs> um, I only listen to music in the car. I don't really listen to it on iTunes. It's either YouTube or TV. Um, but... I would have to say, Start Wearing Purple by Gogo Bordello. Um, yeah, I doubt any of you would have heard of him or the band. It's not a bloke, it's a band. Um, but yeah, Start Wearing Purple, it's just the most amazing song. I heard it in a shoe shop once and I asked the girl to write down the name of the artist because she couldn't pronounce it. And oh, it's great. I will quite happily put that song on repeat for 20 miles and I'll still be singing it when I arrive at my destination. It's wicked. Um, yeah. What kind of style would you define yourself as having? Well, I've never put myself into any category. I just wear whatever appeals to me at that specific time. You know, I'm just like, oh, it's pink, I'll wear that. Oh, and that one's neon green with sparkles on it. I'll wear that as well. And it all goes together and it all looks awesome. And let's see what I'm wearing today, right? I'm wearing a neon orange zebra t-shirt. Yeah, this one's a bit old, but it's still neon orange, so yeah. Um, I don't know if you can see. Um, excuse me. Neon pink tutu. And I got this amazing, can you see it? This amazing rainbow jacket from Camden Market. Yeah, it's cool, isn't it? Um, and I have, right, can you see these? Pink Dr. Martins. These are my favourite shoes in the world. They go with everything. And oh, we're back in the room. And obviously cat ears, because, you know, jazz up any outfit. So I suppose my sense of style will be the cat who got dressed in the dark. Um Yeah. Question ten. What's your favourite number? Thirteen is my favourite number. Um I'm not just trying to be controversial and pick an unlucky number, but um, it's not unlucky for me. I was born on Friday the 13th. How cool is that? Um, every Friday the 13th has been a good day for me. And um, there's 13 stairs in my house. There's 13 stairs in most people's houses, almost traditional English houses. Sometimes when I go around someone's house, on the odd occasion where they have 12 stairs, I'll come downstairs from the bathroom and I'll go, you've only got 12 stairs. And they're like, okay, how many stairs are you supposed to have? 
Um, like you're supposed to have 13, your house is missing a vertebrae. It's well funny because they get really freaked out. Most people don't know how many stairs they have in their house, which is fine. It's perfectly normal, really, to not count your stairs, but um, I'm not perfectly normal. Anyway, yeah, um, 13 is the lucky number. Two hobbies. Nails. Always been nails, all my life. And daydreaming. Yeah, I love daydreaming, and that is a hobby because that's where I get most of my inspiration from, just from daydreaming. You know, just daydream about anything. As long as I know the difference between reality and imagination, I, I'll quite happily sit for ages just imagining what it would be like if I had three legs. I mean, imagine if I, if I had three legs, would I walk like one, two, three, or would I walk like put the one in the middle front first and then the two on the outside? And I mean, I'd probably walk a lot faster, but if I was the, I mean, would I be the only one with three legs or would everybody else have three legs? Because if I was the only one with three legs, then it would be really difficult shopping. And being six foot tall, it's hard enough trying to find trousers that are long enough. So if I had three legs, I think I'd be really fast. But yeah, um, life would be a bit more difficult. Um, yeah, so I just like to like, daydream and imagine like really random things. It's kind of how I met my boyfriend. Well, not how I met him, but, you know, we decided that we had a connection when he was my coach at work and he was supposed to be doing important things and we just sat there chatting about wouldn't it be cool if they invented chairs that had arms and legs and you sit on them and they just walk around so you're like watching the TV and they can just pick up your beer for you you don't even have to, have to hold it you've got a hand for the remote and a hand for the beer and yeah and we we just created these machines and some of them are human and then we arranged to have 60 kids with wings um I've lost my computer yeah um that was well good daydreaming Two pet peeves. Um, people who talk to you as if they're better than you. Um, as if like you're lucky to be in their presence, sort of thing. Like because they're perhaps more famous than you or older or they think that they've had more experience in life than you or whatever, which is fine, you know. But I think you should just talk to everyone the same and treat everyone with the same amount of respect. I'll speak to somebody the same if they're a hundred years old and have fought in the war, or if they're 20 and haven't had any experience and have special needs, you know, you don't go, oh, well, you're not as good as me, so I guess I can say hello, but, you know, I'm going to go and talk to some important people. No, but it's important to be nice. Very important. Um, people who talk down to you. And what else don't I like? What, I, what else is my pet peeve? Um, people who drive at half the speed limit, um, when the road is really, really wide and really clear in front of you and the speed limit is 60 miles an hour, there's no need to do 40 for like miles and miles. And if you're going to, then at least pull over so that people can overtake you. That really, really makes me mad and that's when I start going off in my imagination and think, if I had a flamethrower for an arm, like instead of a hand I had a flamethrower, I lean out my window and just go whoosh, and then I'm sorted. Then I can go at 60 miles an hour. It's yeah, imagination is well good. It it helps me through my troubles and my angry times. Um, yeah, guilty pleasures. Um, I'm not really guilty for any of my pleasures. I'm quite proud of all the things that I'm pleasured by. <laughs> that sounds a bit rude, doesn't it? Um, Guinness. Is that a guilty pleasure? Nice, big, juicy, cold pint of Guinness. Oh, yeah, I don't like it to be settled. I like it to have a big, thick, white bit on the top. Oh, it's so good. I love Guinness. It's like alcoholic, really cold coffee, but it's supposed to be good for you, so I don't know if that's a guilty pleasure. I don't feel guilty at all. I drink Guinness. What are you going to do about it? I'm so not guilty. Um... I don't know if this is a guilty pleasure or an addiction, but I love to have a cup of tea and a cigarette. Oh, those are so nice together. That's a, that's a traditional English breakfast. I know a lot of English people will strongly disagree, but, um, you know, we've got the bacon and eggs and everything. But, yeah, traditional English breakfast, a cup of tea and a fag. Fag meaning cigarette, not slang for homosexual person. I know that that means different things in different countries. But, yeah, a cup of tea and a fag are oh, so nice, yeah. But a cup of tea is good for you. Cigarette, maybe not so much, but yeah, I suppose that's probably quite guilty. It's very bad for you, so don't do it. It's 
It's disgusting. It makes you smell bad. I don't mind though, because I, I can't smell. Uh, um, um, while I'm here, I just want to show you guys something. This was requested of me to show you how I hold my, I'm using my camera now, so I can't really show you that well, but um, it was a request from a lovely girl. I don't, I shouldn't mention her name because she might not want me to, but anyway, she wanted to know how I hold my camera to make my nail, to fail, film nails. Right, so what I have, it's this, um, this is a kitchen rod holder. Okay, look, I'll take the turtle out of it a minute. Mm, 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 mm. Right, it's, this is just a weight. Um, right, this, this silver bit here, here, see, is a kitchen roll um, holder. You know, you put kitchen roll on it, see? And I've got a bendy camera stand, you know, the ones that have got the bendy grippy legs. Um, I think my dad got it for me from Lidl for about eight quid. You can get them from most camera shops, but yeah. And it's got, here's where you attach the camera, right? And, and say, say this was my camera, I put this here as a, in here as a weight because it's actually quite heavy. But say this was my, my camera, I, I click my camera onto there and it points straight downwards like that, see? Right, so just, just imagine, you've all got imagination, yeah, this is my camera and it's attached to here. So yeah, it's basically a camera, a camera stand attached to the top of a kitchen roll thing. I've tried a few other methods before but they're really hard to paint. You've got loads of hand room under here, so you haven't got the tripod legs or anything getting in the way. So anyway, that's the end of the 13 question tag. Um, I hope you had fun. I had fun. It was really cool. Um, and thanks for watching. I'm going to go and have a cup of tea now. So I'll speak to you all soon. Thanks for watching. Love you guys. Bye.